Well, welcome back everybody. We're working on a John D, uh, one of the more inexpensive ones. It's a D110. Um, <clears throat> I yanked off the air cleaner and the air cleaner cover. That's nothing major. But <clears throat> there's a lot of people that show these on YouTube. You know, they just grab them and they fall off. Well, it does come right off on its own. Well, I shouldn't say on its own. You have to help it a little. But they will come off. So if you tip it back, like so, and I'm gonna put you out here on the stand so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, hopefully it'll be helpful to somebody because uh, this bottom's gotta go slide over to come out. So what you do is you just grab these fins and kind of pull sideways while you're wiggling it. I don't know if you just See that go back and forth? Once it comes over, there's a sweet spot right there where it'll come right out. <clears throat> and that's all there is to it. You know, a lot of guys you see them doing it one hand in the staff, well, that's bullshit. It takes a little more than that. But now I'm gonna take off these two bolts here, two bolts in the back. I'm not going to film it, but I'll show it to you once I get done. Okay, as you can see, I got it just lifted up. <clears throat> These four bolts, there's one right down here, one on the other side. This is what they look like. Those are 3 8 10 millimeters will work on them, but they fit a 3 8 better, so they're American thing. This little guy right here goes right there. And that's hooked to the carburetor. So, you know, before you go try to lift this thing up, kind of like I did, just to get it out of the way, what we're going to do, we're going to leave all the fuel lines on. We're just going to undo these two bolts, slide it aside. I'm going to find the right uh, Allen wrench. That's way too big. But I'll find the right one here in a minute. And uh, that's a little small. You know how Allen wrenches are, Christ. Take you five minutes to find the right one. There's the right one right there. Yes, sir. So it's not going to break off. Pretty sure that's an American Allen wrench, too. Of course, this is a Briggs & Stratton, so I don't know really if Briggs & Stratton is being made in the United States or not, you know. Um, hopefully it is. It'd be kind of nice if it was. Yeah, a gasket was $20 at the John Deere dealership, so... Anyway, I'll bring you back here when I get this off, the intake off, and the rocker cover off, and I'll show you what we gotta do next. Okay, got the Allen wrenches, the Allen bolts out. This will just rotate a little bit and come right out. And the gasket stayed good on it. This here was the same, very simple. It's got a got, uh, rubber O-ring. Make sure you don't lose that. I got the bolts out of here. And this is glued on. So, you might have a bit of a problem with that. I don't know. Let's see if I can get this camera straightened out. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, it's tight. Tight enough you almost wonder if it's going to break the screwdriver. I don't know what they glued it with, but... It, uh... It's tight. Silicone, I'd say. Feels like silicone. Looks like silicone. Pretty good stuff. So, we're finally getting into the makings of a... Huh, interesting. Looks like uh, we might have two different push rods. Um, I'm gonna get me, it looks like a 5 8 socket. And uh, we'll see what that, what those rockers are made out of. Well, I shouldn't say that, I know what they're made out of, push rod. Looks like the lower one might be made out of aluminum. But I'm not sure of that. Until I get it off and hold it in my hands. 
Oh, let's see here. Now, where's my 5.8? That's 5.8 right there. Just didn't have my sockets in the right hole. I don't know if we really even need that. These look like they use an Allen screw for a jam nut. It's kind of different. Yeah, definitely an aluminum push rod. Steel push rod. Aluminum goes in the bottom. Kind of different. Put that down there so we don't get it dirty. Now comes the fun part. All the bolts. And this is where John Deere's got the problem. You see they got bolts here all the way around this side, all the way to the bottom here, and there's nothing in this middle. That's where that problem lies. Because with aluminum, of course, it distorts easy. But I'm gonna take these off and uh, yeah, we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, I broke them all loose with a ratchet. But you know, I'm an impatient person sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna keep these in order. Because there probably are some differences, you never know. There might not be. They're all the same. Yep, all identical. Yeah, all the bolts are the same. Now we gotta listen to that. There are two caps on these valves. I got them in the rocker cover. So keep that in mind if you take it off. I uh, don't lose them. Let's just see what we can do. Didn't take much. Gonna we'll make a little bit of a mess. Kind of an interesting blowout. You can see it real good before I take the gasket off. That right there is carbon where smoke's coming in. That's what's pressurizing my crankcase. So it was as I suspected, which, you know, this is one of those things they're notorious for it. And uh, not much of a blowout. But you can see where it is. So, I'm going to put a rag under here to catch this oil. And I'll be back in a second. There, you can see real good. That was definitely blown right out. You can see it real good there. I'm surprised these run as good as they do when they blow that head gasket right there. But uh, they seem to run good, you know, even though they smoke, they run good. So I'm not gonna show all this cleaning and stuff. That's a lot of dubbing. Um, we'll clean this thing off. Hopefully the gasket they sent me is the right one. I think it is. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, once I get it all cleaned up, tomorrow night we'll probably shoot the next part of the video. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. So, See this hammer here? I welded a T on it for my name. But I don't know who made it. It says wear safety goggles. But I'll tell you the funny story about it. I don't know here if I'm in focus or not, but hopefully. But anyway, back between 90 and 94, I worked in the oil field. 
down in West Virginia and had a blast and uh, one of the best jobs I ever had, running 1150 case most of the time and sometimes a 450 John Deere crawler. That was really my job. But I assisted on sputters, you know, 28 Usira series. And I had my own bunch of oil wells. I had 57 oil wells in Middlebury, West Virginia. And that's what caused my divorce anyway, was working too much. But that's another whole story. But we was working on a wellhead one day. And of course, I just had junk for hammers, you know, back at my place. And of course, these Penzoil guys, they come out with this brand new hammer. And I said, jeez, I says, that's a hell of a nice hammer. I says, where do you buy one like that? I said, that's, that's nice that you can find the store and stuff. And the guy's name was uh, Mick Delaney. <laughs> probably shouldn't use his whole name, but <laughs> he's probably retired. He was far enough back, it don't matter anyway. But uh, yeah. I said, you know, how I kind of liked his hammer. And he says, you know, we lose these all the time. I says, you do? He said, oh, yeah. He said, we just turned in his loss. He said, we'll get another one tomorrow. I said, oh, that's interesting. I says, too bad to lose a good hammer like that. Well, I went off doing my bulldozer work to another well. And I came back about an hour later. And this thing laid there on the bank in the dirt. <laughs> and I picked it up and brought it home. <laughs> he left it for me. You know, it was kind of one of those things. They were a good bunch of guys, them, them Penzo guys. They, uh, they were pretty much company men, though. Well, I'll tell you what. They, uh, they actually filed agreements against me for not stopping and taking lunch. And uh, same guys. You know, they, they were all business. They, they were union guys. And boy, when they stopped, they wanted everything to stop. And, uh, yeah. So it was kind of funny how I come by this hammer and I've treasured it ever since, you know, it's my favorite hammer. It's just one of them good hammers. But anyway, that's going to be it for the take apart. Um, the rest is going to be cleaning. When I come back on the next video, we'll reassemble this old girl. I've been told by looking, I haven't actually gone on YouTube, but I've gone on you on uh, the internet, and I've found some stuff says 250 inch pounds. Um, not sure. These are a 5 16 bolt going into aluminum, so 5 16 you know, should be around. I would think 28 pounds, 24 to 28, but I'm not sure. But I'm gonna do some more research before I give you any information for sure. Because uh, 250 inch pounds, what the hell does that equate to? Let's go 250 divided by 12, right? We'll see what the hell it is. 20 pounds, 21 pounds. That seems awful low to me, 21 pounds on those. Um, but I will do some research before I actually reassemble this and give you a number because I don't want to give you the wrong number. So anyway, take care everybody and we will see you on the next one. We'll be putting this old girl together.